He's like the love, love, love and music. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner, and this is my review for Little Women Atlanta uh, season four, episode four. It came on yesterday, but I was just just it was a crazy day, so I was not able to review it until today. I also still have to do Wags Atlanta. I have to watch Wags, and I have to watch the new show now one one because I'm going to review that show too. Someone asked me to review Grown Ish. I haven't watched two episodes that came on yesterday, so I don't know if that show was even reviewable. Um, because I watched Blackish and I don't review that show either, so I don't know if I can even review Grownish because it's just a different kind of show. But you know, stay tuned for Wags Atlanta, stay tuned for um Nine Moon, which I'm gonna watch tonight and hopefully get them both done tonight. Fingers crossed. Um, but I hope everyone had a great Thursday. I had a great day today. I was busy and tired, but I still had a good day. It is still freezing as cold here in Michigan. Um, we are like 10 degrees, like frigid temperatures because the wind chill is even worse. And so, yeah, please pray for us. You know what I'm saying? We used to it. We ain't dying. You know what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong. It's just cold as hell, and I wish it wasn't cold as hell. Um, so, we got another two months of this, you know. Because January and February are our worst months. March is iffy. You know what I'm saying? But once we get through January and February, we're kind of good. So, you know what I'm saying? Jesus be a blanket. Um, but yeah, so this particular episode, it was good or whatnot, you know what I'm saying, some things happen, you know, the episode starts off, we see Money and Sam go to visit Tanya, because Tanya is still pregnant, Tanya been pregnant for a long ass time, Lord Jesus, um, but she's, you know, just about due, she's just waiting for those, the baby to pop on out of her vagina, well, she's probably, not, probably gonna have to have a C-section, but you know what I mean, um, but they came to kind of lift her speech because she's been feeling down, because, you know, the end of a pregnancy, um, the woman is over it, like, completely over it. They just want the baby out of them. So, she's at that stage right now. So, they came to just, like, kind of be nice. and gave her, like, a little spa day, you know. Like, money brought, like, a little foot massage, little thing. You know, you put your feet in and then you put the water and then it's, like, massage your feet or whatnot. And Sam, you know, brought her makeup stuff. Now, the one thing I did say was I wish they would have brought something to put the, to lift up the foot bath massage thing so i'm like i don't even think her feet in the water because again she's a little person so i'm like they don't have like like a little person foot spa thing no okay uh but i'm like because i'm like her feet not in there like she got on table so for me i was like okay but you know you know i'm just a little bit petty sometimes so she's but she's enjoying it, so it's a good thing. You now, money brings up how since she's married now, and since her son is like 11, how she's been thinking about having more children. Girl, you say so. Um, basically because she's married and she think now she's thinking about babies. So she's like made a doctor's appointment to see if she will even be able to have kids um, safely now that she's, you know, it's been 11, year, 11 years since she's had her son. So that was that whole scene. Um, we then see Juicy meet up with um, Amira. And she basically meets w up with her. Now, again, I didn't see the season where Amira was on there. So I have no idea the backstory. I just have some idea that she did not um, get along with the twins. But that's the gist of what I know. Um, I don't know the reason. I don't know if she was a good person, bad person. She was an insca. I don't know none of that. So, you know, my my opinion is not based on no the hell she is. Um, but, you know, she's basically talking to Amira. And, you know, she's saying how Amira was saying how she hadn't talked to any of, the, any of the other ladies except Tanya. And I'm like, okay. So, you know, Juicy then brings up how, you know, I got this friend. You know, he brought me in to be his partner for this management company. I'm still not all the way here for, you know, I got my hands in my pocket on my shirt, so it was weird. Um, but I love pockets. Um, yeah, so I don't all the way believe Juicy and his whole management thing. I mean, I don't, I'm not going to, who knows, Lord Jesus, be offense. But anywho, you know, she's saying how, you know, we're trying to work with different people. And, you know, when I heard, you know, I just wanted to work with you. And she's like, oh, really? You know, with me? 
you know, she said how she's heard some of Amira's music and she liked it. And then Amira, like, well, you know, I don't know Johnny, but I know you. But, you know, I don't want to be with someone just because I'm a little person. And that's why they want to work with me. You know, so I don't, and like, she's like, does he have, like, a list of things for little people? Because, again, he came to Juicy to work with Juicy. And now they come to, to another little person, to work with another little person. So, like, what's the thing? What's the, what's the tea? You know, Juicy lets him know, like, what well, lets her know that when she talked to Johnny, it's like, I didn't tell him that you were a little person. When he heard your music, you know, he didn't know that you were a little person at all. So, you know, that wasn't the thing. So, she's like, oh, okay, well, you know, I'll meet with him or whatnot. She then lets her know, like, you know, just the FYI, when, you know, I'm going to be working with other people, you know, including the twins. And so, I just want to be sure that you guys can work, you know, together. Not together, but y'all can coexist under, under the same management company. And Amira just basically says how, you know, as long as they cool, I'm cool. As long as they don't pop off, I ain't going to pop off. Now, for me, when she said that, because I remember seeing the clips of them arguing with each other. The twins arguing with her. And they're going to end up arguing eventually. I know it's going to happen. In, 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 and when they do argue, then I'll have an opinion. But, yeah, so, you know, but she do say, like, if they cool, I'm cool, you know, as long as they don't want no smoke, I don't want no smoke. So, it's a good thing that she didn't say, like, when I see him, I'm, it's going it's to be on and popping. She said, hey, as long as they don't act, you know, come at me with no, no riffraff, bullcrap, I won't come at them with no crazy riffraff. We shall see how that goes. Um, we then see, we then see many, many in the man to meet up, basically. And, you know, Minnie saying how she's still on her health kick, you know, trying to get in shape and things like that. Um, trying to be healthier. Um, and she brings up how she's thinking about running a 5K, which is about three miles. Now, when she said it, I was like, um, I don't know. I don't know. Because working out, working out and running a 5K or three, three miles is two completely different things. Running a marathon is different than working out. It really is. You have to train for a marathon. You can't train for a marathon by just like doing regular workout stuff to get healthier. That ain't how you do it. Um, and I said that only because not that I've ran any 5Ks, but I've, I know people who have. Um, I've seen like Kevin Hart when he trained to do his, when did he train to run his. I know, I've just seen different like documentaries some people train to do things like that. And I'm like, even they say that they have to literally train for the marathon because it's your body, the endurance your body needs to do it is completely different different than the endurance your body would need to like work out for an hour. It's just different. Um, so, you know, but she said like she knows it's going to be hard, but she wants to try it, you know, as a little person just, just to accomplish something. And I'm like, you know, that's a good thing that she even wants to try it. You know, Amanda then says how, you know, the birthday party was all weird and because Chris and her parents not speaking and how even it was weird for her because she knew Andrea was pregnant and the parents didn't know. And then when, when, you know, when Kristen walked in, how him and the parents didn't even speak to each other, it's kind of crazy. But my thing is, sometimes you can include yourself in other people's foolishness. Like, that's your sister's foolishness. My thing is, if my sister, boyfriend, don't get along with my parents, I ain't going to care. You know what I'm saying? If you walk in and you don't want to speak, okay, that's on you. I'm going to let your ass feel awkward. I ain't going to feel awkward. Um, because my thing is, I wouldn't feel awkward because I'm not the person that's happening. So, you know what I'm saying? So, for me, I would be different. I would be the, I would be the one that would start shit. I'd be the one like, so, you gonna just walk in and not talk to my mom my daddy? Like, I wouldn't let it be awkward. Like, I would bring up the awkwardness. That's the kind of person I am. Like, um, you don't see my mom and daddy sitting right there? You should go say hello. If you can't say hello, you should leave. So that's why for me it wouldn't be awkward because I wouldn't let it get to that point. I'll be looking like you can't go over here and not speak. Don't bring your ass around. <laughs> Love you. But I would like, you know what I'm saying? Be like, look, y'all need to just quiet for whatever it is. And me and my family, you know, we don't I can't date you and be with you if you can't vibe with my family. It, it's just not because in my family we're too close. And they gonna call you out on it. Like they not even gonna allow you to be disrespectful and not and walk in and don't speak we man when i went you know to see my my brother tf at the hospital yesterday and we each greeted each other with a hug and a kiss hey auntie hey cousin you know, you know what i'm saying everything like that or whatever you know we you we you we can't walk into a room and you don't speak you know what i'm saying 
at all. That's just not how we roll. So I can't imagine being in the family where me and my boyfriend walk in and he don't speak to my people and my people don't speak to him and no one brings it up. No, I ain't going like that. Like my like my cousin Tony is gonna be like, Hey, Willis, why your man ain't speak he called me Willis. I don't know why. But uh, <laughs> he gonna be like, Why your man ain't speaking? My brother will be like, Yo, what's up? Why he ain't saying shit? You know what I'm saying? We don't let it fly. So for me, my family, it'll be completely different. Um, but yeah. I get all off topic. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, but yeah, if anything goes into how, you know, with um with Andrea being pregnant, it kind of puts the you know the, the tiniest wings on hold. And she was saying how she doesn't want to continue to put her career on hold based on um, um Andrea Andrea you know getting pregnant over and over. My thing is when she got pregnant the first time, whatever you did in the meantime in between what in, in between how she was pregnant, do the same thing. I mean every time she get pregnant, I would just always have a backup plan. You know what I'm saying? As my own self. And I think that's something else. When you are a dynamic duo or whatever sorts, you need, you need to still always have a plan of what you can do on your own for moments like these. So I think is this is the time for Amanda to say, yeah, the time this one is on hold, but Amanda not on hold. Like, Amanda can do what Amanda need to do. So that way, if she never want to come back to being the tiny twins after having her third baby, I'm not... I haven't wasted nine months of not being in the industry and not being out and about and being seen and being, you know, advertised or whatnot. You have to, you know, start from the beginning. Because my thing is, you only have so much time to be popping. You know what I'm saying? When you aren't in the limelight. Like, if you, like me right now, I do my review. Not, I won't say me. I think you have to be consistent when you're trying to be something. So, like, if you want to be in the whatever your injury is, you have to be consistent and put out consistent content. Hence why I have videos out every single day. Because if you want people to continually support you, you have to give them something to support. So, like, if I stop doing videos for two months, y'all ain't going <laughs> to, you know what I'm saying? I don't give y'all nothing. So, if you disappear for nine months because your sister pregnant, People might not come back around in nine months to fuck with you because you've been gone so long. You probably didn't been replaced, girl. Anyway, so yeah. Um, but next we see Moni. She's went to see her doctor, or whatever. It was a little quick scene. Um, it's just to see if she can, if she can physically have another baby. Now, the fact that she went to the doctor, I'm like, well, is something wrong with her? Like, is she older? Because I don't know how old none of these people are. So, when the doctor asked her, like, you know, what she was coming in, of, in for whatever, and, you know, she brings up how she had a baby 11 years ago, and, you know, things have changed since then, and she just wanted to be sure that she can physically have a baby, how they told her that her, um, her wall, her vaginal canal was too, was, wasn't built to have a regular baby, but she can't birth a baby that's normal size, that's, that's a regular person's size, because her body just isn't built for it. So, she, she had to have the C-section the first time. And so she was to get pregnant again. And if it was a regular size baby and not a little person baby, she might have the same issue. But the doctor said, well, how old are you? When she said 33, I said, I'm, I'll be 36 on the 16th and of this month. And I'm like, I thought she was in her 40s. I, I thought Monty was older. Not that she looks old. She just did not look 33 to me. You know what I'm saying? At all. And I was surprised. I'm looking like, well, why is she thinking that she can't physically have a baby? You already had one. I guess it's, it's, it was just a precaution. So, you know, it is what it is. But the doctor told her that she's fine to have a baby. You know, she's in great shape. You know, even though she's a little person, that doesn't mean that she can't carry a healthy baby. The only issue would be if it's a regular sized baby, she would not be able to have a vaginal birth. It would have to be a C-section. Um, and I'm like, well, that would be for, I think, for any little person. Um, so that, to me, isn't like, it isn't like a health concern. It's just like, once you find out if the baby is a regular size or a, a little person, you just plan accordingly. So, yeah. The doctor do tell her, like, what have your husband said about this or whatnot? It's like, oh, I haven't talked to him yet. And she's like, well, I think you should have that conversation with your husband. You really should. I don't think it's anything wrong with her going to the doctor first just to ask questions. But I do think you need to now let your husband know, well, hey, I was thinking about this. And I talked to her doctor to see if it was, you know, whatever. Just had a conversation with your husband. Um, we then see how Amanda goes to visit 
Andrea's house for the first time because she ain't been over there yet. And I still think that's weird, but you know, it is what it is. And you know, even we haven't seen her house much. We just seen like the living room or whatever, and then like a closet. It's a nice little house. You know what I'm saying? It was decorated pretty and everything. And so I, I thought it was cool. Um, they then talk about how stressful it is with the fact that Chris and her and the parents don't get along. Again, like I said before, y'all allowing that to be awkward. Y'all allowing him to be rude and disrespectful and not talk to your parents. Andrea's allowing that shit to go down and she's stupid for that reason alone. Um, because my thing is, if you can't respect my family, then what, we can't be together. I don't care if we got 14 kids together. Because um, my thing is, we wouldn't have three kids together at that one kid. When, you, when I figured out that you wasn't shit and you couldn't respect my family, we wouldn't even have no more kids. So the fact that you're on baby number three and your boyfriend, baby daddy, live-in sex partner, don't talk to your parents, it's some fuckery and some bullshit. So, you know, when they're both in Howard, you know, they just want him to man up and to, you know, deal with the issues with her parents so they can all kind of get along. I'm like, you having that, con that conversation with the wrong person. Don't have that conversation with your sister. Have that conversation with him. Let him know, look, you need to cut the bullshit out. I don't care about your ego. You need to go and make amends to my family, point blank, period, because they're going to always be around. And if you consistently don't say that to him, and, and make him do Because my thing is you can't not talk to someone because you don't want them to get mad and leave. I feel like she feel like, I feel like she feels like if she talked to him and said, hey, you need to talk to my parents, period. It'll piss him off. He'll, I don't want to deal with this. I'm leaving. Well, bye, bitch. <laughs> you know, I'll be like, well, bye, bitch. Gotta go. See you when I see you. I don't care. I wouldn't just let it ride just so that he'll still be there. <sighs> Girl, bye. Um, so... You know, they do agree that they're going to put, you know, because she's pregnant, you know, um, Andrea's and Andrea. Yeah. Andrea's saying how she wants to put the tiny ones on hold because she's already showing and she doesn't want to put any more stress on her and she just does, doesn't want to do anything um, while she's pregnant. And I get that. You know what I'm saying? She's a little person. So her body is built different. Her the, her stamina could, pro could possibly, possibly be different. And you just kind of don't want to put extra stress on yourself, period. So, you know, I get it. And then, you know, they bring up how they're going to have to go talk to their management people about it because any opportunities they have, they can't do any, do anything right now. So, you know, Amanda goes to meet with Gail, their management person. This meeting to me went left real quick. And I felt like it went left real quick. Just one, for no reason. And two, for the show. Because, you know... They sitting and they talking and you know, Gail's like, Oh, you know how you guys doing? You know, we're doing good and she's like, We well, where's you know, where's Andrea? And she's like, Oh, well, you know, she's pregnant right now. She's like, Oh, okay. She's like, Yeah, so because she's pregnant, you know, you know, we can't really do the tiny school stuff, you know, things have to be on hold. And then, you know, she's like, Well, okay, I get that for you know, for both of you guys, but what about you? Like, can you still do stuff? She's like, We can still work on stuff with you and it went from that conversation, you know, to Gail said something like, you know, I sent you some stuff about some ID promotions, you know, and I kind of didn't hear back from you. And, you know, I kind of, you know, if I send something, if I send you some kind of something, I need you to kind of just to respond because I didn't hear back from you, you know, you need to communicate better. I felt the way she said it wasn't mean or rude. It was an honest statement, you know, a thing of, we can work with just you while your sister's pregnant. But in order for us to do that, if we can, if we send you something, you need to just respond. And Amanda was just <laughs> offended. Like, she was like, well, you know, I don't feel like I have to respond to you guys if you send me something. And then she, like, pulled up a text. Um, because the girl said, yeah, when I emailed you about it, you know, you, you know, the people, the people who were going to pay for us to do stuff contacted me. And I said, I'm waiting to hear back from her. And she's like, no, you know, that ain't what happened. So they both pull up their emails. And then when Amanda read her, read her response, her response was, okay, I'll let you know by the end of the week. And then Gail says, I'm like, okay, well, I'm still working on some things. Just let me know. But my thing is, you never let her know. And even if she was supposed to contact you back about something, why didn't you call her ass back and say, I want to do it. Where's the information? So from there, they kind of kept bumping heads where uh, Gail felt like, Amanda and or um, Andrea, Andrea Andrea was trying to like make her 
prove she has stuff for them. Because at one point, it's like, you, I don't have to prove myself to y'all. I don't have to prove what I have to you. I think you do have to show them proof that you have things for them to be paid to do. I do think you have to do that. Like, you should send them whatever oppor opportunities that they have. Um, but on the other end of that, I feel like if they're reaching out to the twins saying, hey, do you want to do A, B, and C, say yes or no. If y'all don't communicate back to them saying yes or no, you can't get mad that they don't send you the information because you haven't agreed to do anything. So, it just kind of went down here from there where, you know, Gail was kind of like, I, I, I'm okay if you guys want to, you know, turn, you know, split from us. We, it can be amicable. Am, 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 I'm not saying the word wrong. You know, separation is fine. She's like, but, you know, I just feel like you you need to communicate things to us. Amanda felt like, I guess, she was trying to make them look bad, like we send the twin stuff and then they don't do their due diligence to do whatever and it makes them look unprofessional. And then they kind of both were saying, well, you know, I'm not, you know, I don't want you making us look bad. I don't, you know, Amanda said, I don't want you, excuse me, Lord Jesus, I don't want you trying to make us look bad. And then Gail said, I can't make you look bad. You can make you look bad. Now, that to me, she shouldn't have said that. But at, the, at that point, they was kind of going back and forth. And when Gail was like, I just need you to, you know, if I send you an email, you know, I shouldn't get an email back saying shit like, prove it. I don't have to prove myself. And from there, <laughs> it was just crazy. I mean, it's like, I don't have to, I don't have to reply back to y'all. You know, you work for me. You are my man. You do what I say. And I'm like, I'm like, why did it go left so fast? What happened? I felt like Amanda was wrong in saying, I don't have to respond. I don't have to answer your questions. Well, you do because the only way your manager can do stuff for you is if you communicate. Like, you know, that's the only way to do things. So she then said, look, well, you know what? It doesn't matter because your services are, your services are terminated. You know, you're no, no longer needed to be our management. And then she gets up and leaves. And I'm just like, oh, okay. You know, we then see how Amanda, the next, like the next day or whatever, she's telling um, Andrea how it went. Oh, yeah, she was cussing at me. And when she did that, I just got mad. And I'm like, well, she wasn't cussing for what they, what they showed. It wasn't like a full face, like, argument. It was y'all didn't want to work with each other for different reasons. And it was what it was. But, for, you know, Andre, like, well, you know, well, next time we work with someone, we just have to be sure that we're careful who we work with next. And then who comes in? Here comes Juicy. Juicy, like, you know, I got a new management company. And, you know, we were thinking about... You know, working with you guys, but I just want to let you know, we're also thinking about working with Amira. And I'm like, girl, you can't just bring it up like that. Like, I don't, I don't think they like that girl. And then even they said, like, you want to work with us, but you already trying to work with her first. That's some fucking ransom bullshit. But they let her know that, you know, with, you know, Andrea being pregnant, they're putting the, the tiny twins on hold. So they don't know what they want to do just yet, you know, since they just lost their management. And she's like, well, you know what, okay, that's fine. But, you know, once you guys figure it out, you know, just kind of keep me in mind, you know, kind of have me be your first option. I would have been like, girl, no, maybe, maybe not. You know, they do say how they think it would be weird, how they thought it was weird that she did work, will approach um, a beer first. I thought it was weird, too, simply because a beer not even on the goddamn season. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, we see a little scene of, you know, Tanya, Tanya kind of coming to the end of her pregnancy. She's at home. Vaughn has took time off work because she's having contractions that getting closer and closer. And he's like, well, you think it's going to happen soon? And she's like, yeah, it could be by, you know, by even by the end of the night, by the next day. Um, because her contractions are coming stronger and stronger. But she's trying for this home, this whole home birth thing. So she's at home in labor. And, you know, she's like, well, let's go over the plan again. So, like, what happens if we have complications? And she's like, if we have complications, we're going to go to the nearest hospital. And she's just sitting there kind of impact, you know, contracts and stuff like that. So we see the whole little short scene. Um, we see a little scene, too, where Monty um, and Moreland are, like, at dinner. And she brings up how she wants to have another baby and how she wants to see a doctor to be sure that she's still healthy enough to have another baby. And he was like, we had a conversation, you know, we didn't we agree that, you know, because our kids are older, which I did not know that Marlon had four other kids, that he had four kids. He said, you know, we had a conversation that, you know, because our kids are old, older, we didn't want to start again and have more kids. And then she's like, well, yeah, but, you know, since, you know, D2 not moving back here and, you know, we married now and I was just thinking we could have a conversation. It seems like Marlon don't want more kids. And 
I don't, if you already have four and your wife has, that's five kids. Because you have four, your wife got one. You don't want to add another baby to that situation because that's going to be a whole six baby. And, I mean, I don't think he want to have all them children. And he just kind of wasn't open to it. And she said she felt like when they discussed it, it was like, well, let's not talk about it right now because we're getting married. And she's like, she felt like they can talk about it later. But he talking as if he just doesn't want more kids. I don't think that man want more kids, money. I think you need to just leave that conversation alone. But no, 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 not leave it alone. Ask him verbatim, do you, are you saying that you never want kids ever? Because my thing is if one person wants kids and the other one doesn't, that's going to be a conflict of interest eventually. So there's a point in having a conversation now because if you are 33, you don't want to wait till you're 45. Y'all been married for 12 years. And then all of a sudden he said, I don't ever want kids. And now you want to divorce. But now you are older and you might not be able to carry a baby, you know, when you're older and a little person. So, you know, it is what it is. But he does say, like, like at this point in my life, I'm not ready to have more children. I respect him for saying that to her, letting her know, like, I ain't ready for more kids. And that's a valid stance to have. If you say, like, I feel like I'm not ready to have more children. It's one thing to say, I just don't want more kids. But not really, not saying that you're not ready for, you just don't want kids. His thing is, we not, we ain't ready, okay? Food ain't ready, the burger ain't cooked, you know what I'm saying? The fries ain't ain't, ain't fried, we, we ain't ready. And so, she's kind of disappointed, but they'll probably just talk about it later. Um, we do see Juicy, who takes Abina, Abina, <laughs> a beer to go meet Johnny. Um, she did a little audition thing. She, like, climbed up on the table, was shaking her butt, and was doing a little rap or whatever. I mean, it was okay for what it was, but I'm like, girl, your mom didn't tell you not to put your feet on the table. I mean, you was really on the table like you was at home, girl. Okay. Um, Johnny liked it. You know what I'm saying? He wants to sign her as their, as one of their clients. Juicy does let him know that she has not signed the twins because the twins are on hiatus because one of them is pregnant and they're just kind of on hold. And she thought he would be upset, but he's like, no, you know, you brought a beer in and she's, because I mean, he really liked the beer. He did. I mean, and she's different. So I think, you know, people would book her for different shows to do whatever. Um, but he wasn't too upset, upset that the twins weren't signed to them because he's like, I'm happy you at least brought her in, we can do other things. If he asks her to bring in another little person, he's a little person obsessed, okay? You need to have Juicy, you know, go to some regular sad people. Because if you don't, I feel like you got Juicy so that you would have an in with other little people. And I don't like that. So, yeah. Um, The last scene, of course, is Monty, um, not Monty, Minnie and Sam doing the marathon. Now, you know, Minnie, it was Minnie. Sam, who was running, um, Amanda, who was there chanting the morning, and also, um, Minnie's mom. Did I say money again? Minnie and Sam. Um, and also Minnie's mom was there. Now, Minnie is, you know, she was already crying in the beginning just because she was saying how she, you know, is getting kind of nervous, but she just wants to finish it. And I feel like on some level, Minnie's expectations were unrealistic simply because she was saying, you know, I just, I just don't, I don't want to be last running. You are a little person, and you're a plus size little person, technically. And as a plus size adult person, as a plus size person who was five feet, um, a marathon would be hard, period. Um, as Sam said within this episode, you know, we are little people, we already have health issues, and you know, we also don't have the best bones. And so, it's going to be hard. You know, it's okay. So, you know, they started off good. You know, they, pow, they running. You know what I'm saying? They going. And they started off running. I didn't think that was a smart idea. I think if you haven't really trained for it, you should start off walking. Because if you start off walking, you won't build up. You won't get so tired so fast. So, they were running at first. And then Minnie was like, I don't know if I could do this. You know, she was sweating. She, had, she was slowing down because at that point she was probably in pain. And everybody know running on the cement concrete is is tough on your body than running on a treadmill and some comfy shoes. You know, it's, it's just a different um, level of 
tension within the body, you know, working and stuff. So she didn't realize how hard it was going to be. So, you know, she stopped. She was crying. She was saying, I don't know if I can do this. I just want to finish. So she was very, very emotional, which is why, you know, Sam was giving her encouragement, saying, like, it's really hard for us. If you have to stop, let's stop. We can walk. You know, we can do whatever you need to do. When Minnie kept saying, I just want to finish. She's like, okay, we can finish. So I love how Sam would just kind of help her. Even when she didn't know what she needed. Because, like, she didn't know if Minnie wanted to stop, if she wanted to keep going. So, it's like, she was like, do you want to stop? Do you want to take a break? She's like, yeah, well, let's just take a break. And so, I like how she was just able to be supportive of her, seeing how hard of a time Minnie was having. So, eventually, Minnie did end up, you know, not finishing the race. Um, you know, she went back, you know, the way she came. And she was very emotional. She was crying. But they kept saying to her, like, you know, this is your first marathon, you know be happy that you even attempted to do it, that you made it, you, you started running, even though you didn't finish, but you now know what you have to do if you want to do another one. So she did say she was going to train to do another one. Again, people who do marathons train for months to build up their, you know, body to be able to do that. And I feel like she thought because she was working out, you know, just to be healthier, that she would be able to do a marathon. And it's just, it's just a completely different thing and it's, it's, it's just different and you know I'm I am happy that she um tried it you know what I'm saying and that she wants to still try it again um it could take a couple and I think even regular people who've trained for marathons can't finish their first I think everybody thinks it'll be easy because oh I run all the time and it's completely different so you know bravo and bravo to her it was really cool how you know Sam and her mom and Amanda you know just try to make her feel better about it. And she did say, you know, she's going to try to do it again next time. And that was the whole episode. So, you know what I'm saying? Let me go ahead and watch that one once I can review it. Because guess what? I am Jay Lee, and this is Jay Lee's Corner, and that was our review for uh, the Little Women Atlanta. I'm like, what? Little Women, Little Women Atlanta Season 4. Was Episode 4? Yep, Season 4, Episode 4. Um, So, yeah. It was what it was. So, Hope you guys enjoy. Put any comments you want below. Don't forget to like my video. You can share the video on your social media. And put a comment in just to say hello. So until next time, people, peace.